flat earthers are desperately trying to come up with a model of their earth that should work and terribly failing to do so. The most striking example of this is their depiction of the sun's trajectory. I'll show some of their attempts to do so, dependent of their map of choice. You have the astrolabras that seem to suggest that the sun gives a very unlikely light and shadow shape in the form of a yin-yang sign. Then there are those that make things up as they go along. The sun, when it goes around the equator, the center of that circle is here. Now, this center never stays fixed. It's continuously moving, always has done, always will do. It moves from this central point here, down to this point, as the sun narrows to go around the Tropic of Cancer. It then swings back towards the center and then over this way to here when it goes around the Tropic of Capricorn. We we'll make it an oscillation with my hand. It is continuously doing this. I'm exaggerating, but it is continuously doing this. So trying to get readings of the sun in terms of distance with a protractor, we're always going to have questions because the center of this oscillation also moves. This one is an attempt to circumvent the problems with Gleason's map, but stumbles on the next problem. The sun is magically teletransported from one end of the map to the other. and in some mysterious way the sun suddenly moves in the opposite direction. But the most commonly accepted model seems to be this one. The sun follows a circular trajectory, changing its course from the Tropic of Cancer to the equator and then to the Tropic of Capricorn and vice versa. You can test this model quite easily. You can establish the elevation of the sun in this way. So let's say the sun is shining on some beautiful day. And let's say here's the ground right here, and maybe you've got a fence post right here. And let's say that you take out a ruler and you find out that that fence post is three feet tall. Just draw a line from the sun across the top of the fence post all the way to the ground like that. So in this case, that's how long the shadow would be. So let's say that, um, that shadow was maybe two feet long at a certain time of day. The angle of elevation of the sun in this case is just this angle right here. Let's call that theta. Well, we could also draw that angle right here if we wanted to. It's the same angle. If you remember from trigonometry, the tangent of an angle is equal to the length of the side opposite the angle. So in this case, that's three divided by the length of the side next to the angle. So in this case, that's two. So the tangent of this angle is three halves, or 1.5. So, so to figure out what that angle is, you use something called an arc tangent or an inverse tangent. So the way we would write that on paper is just that the angle equals the arc tangent of 1.5. In January, this elevation at 12 o'clock is 14.4 degrees due south in Amsterdam. 
you can construct the position of the Sun assuming a height of 3000 miles or 4800 kilometers. So the supposed position of the Sun is here. In January the trajectory of the Sun follows the Tropic of Capricorn. So the Sun should be here at that time. This poses an impossibility in this model. Well, you can't measure the elevation of the Sun by visual means, flat earthers will argue, because of refraction and perspective. This of course is nonsense, but let's look at it in a different way. The equinox is the moment that the Sun is positioned straight above the equator. At this time the length of night and day is more or less equal, hence the name equinox, and it is so all over the world. The Sun rises due east and sets due west all over the world. In Amsterdam that looks like this on a flat earth. The separation between day and night is depicted by the east-west line through Amsterdam. It is quite clear that daytime is a lot shorter than nighttime. If the equinox in Amsterdam is an impossibility in the flat earth model, it is so also in Irkutsk in Russia, Adak in Alaska and Saskatoon in Canada. These cities lie on the same latitude as Amsterdam. The equinox is also impossible in Bergen, Norway and Ibrahim, Nigeria cities at the same longitude as Amsterdam. As a matter of fact, the equinox would be impossible in the entire world except at the North Pole, were it not that that's the only place on earth where the equinox doesn't happen, because there is no east or west on the North Pole. So no equinox north of the equator. How about south of the equator? Maybe Brisbane? or Cape Town, or Ushuaia, the most southern city in the world. On a flat earth model the line east-west doesn't even cross the equator, so it's impossible for the sun to rise due east and to set due west, so no equinox there either. This can mean one of three things. The equinox doesn't take place on a flat earth or the sun doesn't rise due east and sets due west, but rises due south and sets due north at an equinox, or the flat earth model is wrong. The first two possibilities are most certainly not true. The equinox takes place, and at the equinox the sun rises due east and sets due west. This can be easily established experimentally, by going outside and having a good look as Sly Sparkane has done in collaboration with some YouTubers all over the world. So the flat earth model must be wrong. I wouldn't know what you could argue against that. But let's look at it at yet another per perspective. Let's look at the position of the Sun at different places in the world at the same time. Let's say July 22 at noon Amsterdam time. In my model I place the Sun at the right azimuth. The elevation isn't the determining factor here and it would muddy the water because flat earthers claim that the Sun stays at a constant height and globe earthers claim that the Sun is under the horizon at some places. Therefore I only use the azimuth. This can be established by using a compass and the azimuth isn't deformed by atmospheric conditions or perspective. So it's July 22 noon in Amsterdam. At that very same moment it is 9 o'clock in the evening in Brisbane, Australia. The sun has just set there. It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon in Pretoria, South Africa. It's 8 o'clock in the morning in Buenos Aires, where the sun is just rising. 
When we depict all these directions in one scheme, you can see that the sun at the very same time is supposed to be all over the place. I've shown three different methods to test the most common model of the sun in a flat earth. Each and every one of them demonstrates without a doubt that the sun model doesn't work and couldn't work under any circumstance. So in fact there is no need to argue that sunrise and sunset aren't possible in this model of the flat earth. And there is no need for flat earthers to come up with all kinds of fancy ideas why sunset and sunrise can perfectly be explained. They should aim their efforts to constructing a model that does work. Since Samuel Robotham published his book Zetetic Astronomy Earth Not a Globe in 1881, flat earthers have had 136 years to, a clump to accomplish just that feat. And still there is no feasible model of a flat earth. In the meantime conventional science has come up with accomplishments like the metal detector, air brakes, radio, aspirin, roll film cameras, coca cola, electric motors, motion picture projectors, nuclear power, the personal computer, airplanes, automobiles, submarines, antibiotics, televisions, the internet, to name but a few. And flat earth science has come up with absolutely nothing. I wouldn't have to doubt which science works and which doesn't.